stage some representatives from Silver Seven. Hi everyone, and um, those of you who are here to see a gaming talk of some sort, well, what we do is we expand gaming beyond your thumbs. This is the greatest toy the world has ever seen. Anybody who disagrees is welcome to take one and find out for themselves. Has anybody here swung a lightsaber of their own? Yeah? Anybody here fans of watching lightsaber action on screen? Alright, just, just, what's the most important thing when you're watching a lightsaber battle? Is it the person who wins? Is it just the fact that it's amazing to watch? Yeah? So if there was a match, for example, where two people were trying desperately to prove that they were better than the other person in front of them. Is that something that would be interesting for you to sit and pay money to watch? You'd watch, watch that, really. Like the world isn't full of that already. Like, is there any way you can go where you can get away from people who are desperately trying to prove that they're better than the person sitting next to them? <laughs> there isn't really, is there? It's Planet Earth 2022. It goes around the world, right? So what we've done is we changed the game. So martial arts is martial arts. It has existed for thousands of years. In fact, some of the movements that we teach as part of our academy are in fact older than any of the languages that we still use to communicate with. These movements are older than speech. And yet what we have is a room full of people who are experts at sitting in chairs. So we had to change the game. Because something was going horribly wrong. All of the people we loved spent all day sitting down like this. And then they stood up to go to the bathroom and discovered that they forgot how to walk. And as a result, they couldn't see where they were going anymore. So they had to lift their chin out. And this became the new human standard for locomotion. And it is tragic. Oh my God, it's tragic. And we also noticed that nobody really fights with a sword in battle anymore. That ended with World War II. It really ended before that. The last time we saw swords issued to infantry was around World War II. And since then, we now fight by remote control from 3,000 miles away. So what's the point in learning the art of the sword? It is functionally redundant. And yet it is so intimately connected to human evolution. The shape of your wrist, the shape of your hand. Hold up your hand. Hold your hand up, look at it. Look at it towards you. It is flat. And now hold it to the side. It is a blade. Your palm and the extension of your palm to understand who you are. It is useful to occasionally have a mirror with which you can study yourself. And this is why Excalibur was a sword. Zulfikar was a sword. Light sabers are light sabers. Because no other weapon in the history of humanity has demanded not only were you an athlete, but you also had to be an anatomist, a mathematician, a geometrist, and most important of all, the art of the sword demanded philosophy. It was no longer sufficient that you were the biggest or the fastest or the strongest. Because with this weapon, all of a sudden, the only thing that mattered is the person who was clearest in their mind for the moment when it mattered. 
didn't matter if you were little or big, boy or girl, if you zigged instead of zag at the right time, you walk away successful. Returning to the art of the sword is simply returning to an understanding of your human self. And that is where we begin our journey as traditional martial artists. But I'm not gonna lie, it's dry. It's a slow process. The old school would insist that you stood in the forest in the snow with the tea on your body and you had to stay for month after month until your teacher finally decided to feed you. Oh, you remember? It was hard, right? How many people do you think who grew up with the internet in their hand are prepared to stand in that forest anymore? Would you do it? <laughs> There's a few. They're normally young. <laughs> It's an incredible thing, but we are about to lose all of that knowledge as humans. It's disappearing because what we got really good at was this. And soon you're just going to feel like, can I just have an input and an output and just get rid of the body? Because my life would be much easier. The backache would be gone. Right? Well, you know, when they get around to that, you know, do it. It's a great idea. However, until then, you are stuck with back pain, knee pain, diabetes, arthritis, and the variety of other maladies that have infected postmodern humanity. So we changed the game. We fight. For love, for fun. We don't fight for survival with these things. But if I was to be facing another human being, and this is lit, this is this is a lovely piece of kit, and you can see it, it doesn't really doesn't really matter how fast I move it because it's lit, so you can see it. Now, with real steel moving at that speed, there's nothing to see. It's not very entertaining. Hands up anybody who watches fencing in the Olympics. One, <laughs> two, three. Hands up anybody who watches HEMA on YouTube. Historical European martial arts. One, two. So are we agreed that for some reason, the art of the sword has become boring? Yay? So shall we change the game? Yeah, we need you to learn how to move, how to breathe, how to stand, how to be. And you've got this fantasy in your head. Like, yeah, I'm like Spider-Man. But you're not. We need somewhere where you can test your progress, pressure test yourself, understand your posture. Ben, if you could step forwards for me. There is an alphabet for the human body. Turn, cut to the top of the head, cut it short. His head is above his foot, the knee is above the ball of the foot, the line from the heel up to the top of the head is almost straight and the arms out of the point present a gentle bow. This is the bow stance. Show me a sit back with a hanging parry. The front foot is empty. Handy. But he has to be able to hold that balance in the event. Turn to the side. If this parry is effective and he has the balance, what can he do with his empty foot? Show them. Is that your empty foot, Ben? Show me the empty foot. That's it. <laughs> so he has to understand forwards and he has to understand backwards. 
so that he can then put one after the other and walk. But we were talking about lightsabers. How are we all of a sudden talking about walking? Well, if you build anything, you start with the foundation. First, you have to understand foot on the floor. Then you structure the spine above it so that you have the axis and then the mechanism of the hands simply applies the sword to the target with a simple breath. This is the art of the sword and this is what it means to us as people is a return to being ourselves. Now we're going to put some of you through the basics and I will explain why we do things the way we do as we put you through this. Now, I will need four, four volunteers. It's one, it's two, three. Anyone in Star Wars cosplay? Yes. Uh, you're too shy to say you're going to stay there. Three, two, one. That's it. You can bring your lightsaber. So we changed the game, and as they get their sabers, I'll talk about the game. So did you, anybody see the display that we did an hour ago? Nobody saw that? Oh my god, guys, you have to wait a whole year to see that again. <laughs> Who are we missing? It's you! <laughs> it's alright, you can be Spidey. Yeah, the multiverse and stuff, there is a Jedi Spidey out there somewhere, <laughs> right? We don't care guys, just be yourselves, it doesn't matter. Come on. So we changed the game and we moved away from fighting and scoring points and trying to be the best even though we still have the points because we need to know whether it worked or it didn't work. And what we did is we created something beautiful with the idea being that if you were to watch one of the fights that our fighters were delivering, you wouldn't know whether it was a film scene or whether they were fighting for points. This was hard to do. Because the thing about a sword is they started off as just being pointy things. Sure, can I borrow you for a second? And the thing about a pointy thing is this. If I'm standing there, eek, 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 it's not actually very interesting to watch because what <laughs> it hurts as well. But the thing about the saber is the beautiful arcs of light that they deliver. So if the fighting method was like this, we fall asleep. But if the fighting method is people spinning around with these gorgeous arcs of cut we suddenly have something that's worth watching. Put a bit of uniform or cosplay on, throw on some music, and you don't even know when you're being filmed. You just see it in the background afterwards, three years later, you're like, oh wow, I look good. And you do, because you're doing it properly. So we changed the game, and we changed the vocabulary of the sword to accentuate and prioritize the cuts that look beautiful. Space them out. Bring them here. Here you come. Don't worry, you're safe. Level one is just learning how to communicate with the sword. Level two, much longer it takes. Oh my shoulder there. Much longer it takes indeed. Level two will take several months. Level three is combat. Might happen instantly, might take years. Level four is the advanced syllabus. Level five is the display fighting. Level six is therapeutic anatomical understanding. Level seven is meditation and qigong. It's a lifelong learning program and every single person who comes through it upgrades who they are in the process. Are you ready? Okay. Take your right hand and place it at the top of the hilt near the blade. Take your left hand and place it at the base, which we call the pommel. If I point my fingers, my fingers are pointing straight ahead. 
not to the sides, out straight ahead. That's it. And I want you to keep this up. Now, there is a possibility that our guests here might get tired halfway through this. It's hard work. Do you understand? If you get tired and you want to tap out, you hold your hand up and say, I've had enough, and I'll grab somebody else and you'll come up. Is that fair? All right, from here. Feet straight, like the number 11. See, most people will walk around with their feet pointing in different directions, which means my right foot's going that way, my left foot's going that way. It's very confused. It's very typical of people who do not study how to walk. Feet straight. Next, there is one thing your legs are designed to do. Bang. Go and watch the world. You will not see a single animal or insect walking on locked legs. Not one. Oh, there is one. Post-modern people. Right? So, bend the knees. Reach out. Did I have anything? Reach out. Point the saber far away. Point it past me. Now, take a deep breath in. As you breathe out. Breathe in. Lift it up. Breathe out, let it drop down. And all we're doing is we're understanding the huge sheet of muscle that divides the upper and lower body. Breathe in, lift. Breathe out, let it relax. It is integrated with every single movement you do. And it's more. Your diaphragm does something remarkable. What happens when you cry? Which muscle is it? It's the diaphragm. What happens when you laugh? <laughs> Which muscle is that? It's the diaphragm. What happens if you get scared? <laughs> it's the diaphragm. It is the muscle that is your feelings from here. Just rotate and release. Rotate and release. One side now and the other. Keep the point in the middle and let the saber move from one side to the other. And I'm pushing, pushing it out, and pushing it out, but I'm staying in the middle. Now, if you straighten your legs, it will hurt. So I have to come round and just remind you that we are people with legs that bend, and you keep them bent. That's it, that's it. So you can see, they think they're studying lightsabers. What are they really studying? How to be a person, right? Going back to the beginning. Did I say stop? Keep going, right? Keep the point in the middle. That's it then. Push it to one side. And back through to the other. Good directions, get those feet. Keep those knees bent. This side, and this side, here it comes. And this side, here it comes. There it is. And you can see our young friend here has immediately discovered that he can protect his knees by moving the saber from one side to the other. Bend those knees, keep those feet straight. There you are. Whoa, keep it low. That's it. There you are. One side to the other. But I'm not interested in their kneecaps, not when I can have breakfast on the table. So from here, bring the point of the weapon up to middle. One side and the other. One side and the other. And if you straighten your knees and do this, you end up kind of it's a bad look because we don't do that. So you sink the knees, rotate the waist, and re-establish the axis of the spine. There you go. Keep the knees bent. Don't let them collapse in. That's it. Bend those knees. You ready? So I have to check to see he's not using one of our sabers. Is this going to break if I hit it? Ah, you're going to be all right. Don't worry. Hold it up, this side. There you are, this side. There you go, this side. This side. And again. And again. You see the size of the cuts I'm giving? One. Two. If he didn't have the saber in the way, he'd lose a bit, right? From here, now we have to go higher. Because ultimately, what I'm looking for is this cut here. It's the best way to keep him quiet. From here, high guards to protect your face. You're gonna lift the blade up 
above your eyes, down through the middle and up the other side, down through the middle and up the other side. At all times, the point of the sword is aiming directly ahead and keeping me safe from somebody charging me. Protect the face, protect the face. All of this also done with the breath. Good. And again. And again. And again. And again. And again. And again. Higher. That's it. Again. Down and up. Drop the elbow. There you go. Higher, 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 higher. Knock your hat off, I will. Higher. Come on. Lift it up. No, no, no. That's it. There you go. Here we go. There it is. Now I'm going to let go of the point of your sword and you have to keep that pointing at my throat, don't you? There it is. High guards wielding the weapon, the art of the sword. Right, from here, the next step is defense. So what am I aiming for? What's my primary target? There will be, right? What's my primary target? Is it the foot though? It's the head. So what do we need to defend? The face. We do it with a head parry. From here, raise the blade up, and now just bring the point back so you've got a horizontal blade above your face. That's where it is. From here. Is that high enough? There you go. And from the top, you're going to now sink the pommel down past your belly and like a windscreen wiper, it's going to run up and clear your face for you. Down and lift, down and lift, over and over, bend those knees, straighten those feet. I'm only correcting foundations, do you see that? They think they're learning about swords. It's a secret. Up and down. Up and down. And again. And again. Faster. There you go. And again. And again. Now it's got to come flat. That's it. And again. There you go. There you go. That's it. But once they've got the head protected, well, if you would be so kind, We've all seen that, right? <laughs> it's a great way to end a good film. We need to protect the belly. Lots of vitals, very soft. From here, back to the high guard. Bring it across for the head parry. Now simply drop the point of the sword down towards the floor. And I want you to create this square for me. With your elbow in front of your shoulder, that's it, there you go, drop the shoulder, drop the elbow, there we are. And this is what we would refer to as a hanging parry. It's nice, you get to keep your breakfast, it's a great move. Can you see the size of the cuts we're using? Do you see the difference from fencing? From here, wind it across, and back. Now this time, wind it across, and wield the weapon into the new hanging parry. This one we call the number six. Draw back across and wield back to the number two. Now obviously, if Ben, you cut to my belly on this side, if I wield across high, what's the problem with that? So I have to keep the point of the sword down so that as I'm going across, I'm not letting him go. And I can turn it. There's no point at which my belly is exposed. I have to worry about my face, but I've already got my head parry under wraps. So from here, one side to the other, parry two to parry six. Here's the parry six. Across and change. Across and change. But don't lift the point up. Keep the point heavy, like a meteorite landing. Keep it all the way down. There we are. Ready? 
bend those knees. Across and turn. Oh, don't turn your hand. Here we go, here we go, underneath. There it is, there it is. There you go, across and back. Across and back. So what are they struggling with? Sending instructions from the brain to the body without getting confused. Why is this important? Well, because you're going to spend four months on your cosplay. It's going to cost you hundreds of pounds. You're finally going to get the perfect backdrop and you're going to stand there ready to take pictures and you're standing in your posture like this. And it doesn't matter how expensive the cosplay was, it looks like you don't know what you're doing. They're learning about their bodies. From here. So we have one head parry. And we also have lateral or hanging parries. Which means we now need to progress to performing your first attacks. And the first attack you're going to do is deliver it to the face vertically, straight down through the centre. And this cut is executed from the hanging parry. So we started mother stance. We built the structure up. We learned to wield the weapon from the centre. We understood that the parries needed to move an incoming attack out of the way and we had to study the nature of the connection between our minds and our bodies in order to get this movement clean enough to be useful if somebody was attacking. Are you ready for the head cut? Are you sure? Right, listen, you're not allowed to use your stuff off this stage, okay? From here. Hanging parry, number two, off the right side. The first thing I want you to do is point the back of the saber at your target. Now you're going to pull the left hand in towards your tummy and that pushes the top of the sword over the top. There it is. From here, again, into the hanging parry. Extend and cut. Wield and parry. Extend and cut. Wield and parry. Again, extend and cut. Those knees bent. That's it. There you go. You're getting used to this. How long have we been on stage? 15 minutes. Have you learned something? From the top, do the cut. Cut. Defend. Cut. Defend. Cut. That's not high enough, is it? Right? Cut high here. That's it. Defend. There you go. Cut. Let me see. Right. Okay, let's try the other side as well. From here, cut to the head. And now this time you're going to roll your forearm and hand over the other way. Push the left hand past to arrive in the parry six. Good. Extend with the pommel and cut. Wheel back to the original side. Extend with the pommel and cut. Left and cut. Right and cut. Left and cut. Let me see that go. There you are, bend the knees, don't straighten your legs. Get those feet closer together. And then, hey, what have we got? <laughs> Et voila, as if by magic, the dormant DNA springs back into life and you see the beginning of four new fighters. And we don't actually care if they never get into a fight. All we want is for when these young lads go and sit their exams and they see the question in the paper that they hadn't revised, instead of puking and having a bit of an issue, you remember, take a breath, tuck your chin, Lower the blood pressure. Restore your heart rate. Clear your mind. And answer the next question. The art of war is simply managing yourself under impossible circumstances. 
So we don't fight to prove we're the best. We fight to learn who we are when the dark comes for us. This is the meaning of the art of the sword. This is why martial arts will never be something we evolve past because we will always have to deal with the light and the dark in every day that we wait to rise and meet. I hope you enjoyed this little snippet of our lives and I hope that you've learned something of what we do and something about yourself over the last half hour. Please. Oh, we have classes, obviously. Online, silver-sabers.com. We are teaching, but we're fully booked, but you can come and talk to us if you really like us. And if you don't, then don't, it's fine. We won't mind. Take care, everyone. <laughs>